The invertebrates, reptiles and amphibians of Madagascar already lived here when the island separated from Africa 165 million years ago. The birds and bats easily flew here, crossing the 400 kilometers of the Mozambique Channel. But the great enigma of the island, to which scientists have still not found an answer, is the origin of its land mammals. This is a brown lemur, one of the 33 known species of lemur that today live in Madagascar. Just a short distance away, another lemur, in this case a black and white one, observes its small, noisy relatives. All lemurs are herbivores and insectivores, and if resources are abundant, they avoid competition, being tolerant and even playful with other species. But this black and white lemur, who just wants a bit of peace and quiet, doesn't seem to be at all amused by his neighbors. The lemurs are the most representative animals of Madagascar and the ones with the most mysterious origin. In evolutionary terms, they are closer to the ancestral primates than more modern types of simians, and their appearance and behavior has led man to consider them since the time they were discovered as strange beings halfway between animals and spirits, which has earned them their name, Limur, a Latin world meaning the spirit of the dead. Nonetheless, these agile prosimians are quite simply the result of an evolutionary path different from that of the monkeys, large simians and human beings with which they share distant common ancestors. The lemurs are not the only land mammals in Madagascar. Among the half-light of the jungle floor, a group of ring-tailed mongooses approaches, sniffing in search of small prey. A family of lemurs attentively observes them. The mongooses do not pose a threat for the lemurs, but their appearance is very similar to that of the civet, the largest carnivores in Madagascar, and it's best to make absolutely sure and not let down your guard. In Madagascar, there are only nine species of carnivores, and all of them, except these civets, which were introduced by man from Asia approximately 2,000 years ago, are endemic to the island. The crowned lemur does not take its eye off them. These ring-tailed mongooses feed on insects, eggs and small rodents, so for the family of lemurs they are completely inoffensive. So both families ignore each other and the mongooses and crowned lemurs go their separate ways, continuing their search for food. Except for the bats which flew here and those introduced by man since he first settled on the island, the origins of Madagascan mammals remains an enigma. All of them are unique in the world, and all of them appeared after Madagascar had separated from the continent. So scientists continue to come up with theories in response to a simple but inexplicable question. How did they get here?
400 kilometers of open sea separate the island from the African continent. This was the challenge for mammals that wanted to reach a land where there was no competition. Today, there are two theories as to how they could have done it. One maintains that between 45 and 26 million years ago, when it is believed the mammals of Madagascar began to evolve independently, there were two land passes in the Mozambique Channel, which the mammals simply crossed on foot. But the most widespread theory speaks of a more exciting adventure, a journey across the channel on the small islands of vegetation or floating branches. Like this intrepid gecko, small mammals could have also drifted across the sea and colonized the promised land of Madagascar. And those involuntary sailors would have been the origin of the diversity of endemic mammals on the island today. This family of ring-tailed lemurs is scuttling around the spiny forest of the Berenti Private Reserve in the south of the country. No other lemurs spend so much time on the ground as the ring-tailed ones, probably due to the aridity and precariousness of the habitat in which they live. The ring-tailed lemurs are the most and best studied of all Madagascan mammals. The naturalists that began to observe their behavior at the start of the 1960s discovered that they were the most easily observable species because they are diurnal and spend more time on the ground than any other lemur. The vegetation of the spiny forest in which they live does not provide food throughout the year, and what food there is available is generally very dispersed and they need to look everywhere in order to find it. Like the spiny forest in which the ring-tailed lemurs live, the different ecosystems of Madagascar played a considerable part in the diversification of all the animals of the island. Its geographic position and the rock formation which divides it created very different climatic regions. From north to south and east to west, Madagascar becomes drier and warmer, and along this climatic gradient arose humid jungles, swamp areas, semi-desert regions, and spiny forests like this one. And in all of them, evolution gradually created unique creatures which would not appear anywhere else in the world. It has been calculated that in Madagascar there are close to 200,000 different species of living beings, of which 150,000 are exclusive to the island. Such is the power of this parallel evolution adapted to the conditions of the legendary Lemuria that each group shows extraordinary diversity of species which have developed in the course of thousands of years of isolation. Of the 135 species of chameleons that exist in the world, over half live exclusively in Madagascar. They are the most specialized lizards in the world, the ones best adapted to life in the trees. Their flat bodies enable them to move easily among the branches and absorb heat by exposing it sideways to the sun. Their prehensile tails help stabilize them on their risky movements among the treetops and the fingers of their hands are fused together in two opposable groups by means of which they cling to the trunks and so climb with total security. Mm -hmm. 
They are expert hunters, camouflage taken to the extreme. Their bodies change color, their shapes are an imitation of the surrounding environment. Their immobility turns them into branches and leaves. And when they move, they look just like a part of the tree, rocked by the wind. Almost all the characteristics of their lizard bodies have been modified in order to better adapt to the environment in which they live. Here in Madagascar, they have developed their biological potential to the full. All the possibilities that the surroundings and genetics have been able to combine. And the result is extraordinary chameleons, ranging from this enormous Parsons chameleon over 60 centimeters long to the tiny members of the Bukesia genus, the smallest and most astonishing chameleons in the world. The Bruchesia are quite unlike any other chameleons, and not just in terms of size. While other species live in the trees, they prefer the dead leaves of the jungle floor. And it is precisely these leaves that their tiny bodies, no longer than 35 millimeters, imitate. While the rest of the chameleons compete for the trees of the jungle, the Bruchesia have an entire world for themselves. They have had to pay a high price for this achievement. They cannot radically change color, and their tails are only partially prehensile. But the Bruchesia do not need these skills in a world of dry leaves. And for as long as the jungle remains, this tiny chameleon's world is safe. 